Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 4 of my Pez Card Collection Road to Glory series. Sorry for how long it's been since episode 3, but it's been a crazy few weeks. It's been quite a few events since where we left off, so there's quite a bit to get through this video. Now, let's get started. But first, why not subscribe to the channel with notifications on so we notify whenever we upload a new video. The first event that came around was the Rising Stadium event. My plans going into this event were to get the 5 star draw and Legend X gigs, and then just work on other areas of the team until the event finishes. By the end of the first few days, I had 6 4 star plus guaranteed sniper cards, which all resulted in 4 star players that were of no use to the team. I also received one 5% legend chance draw, which also resulted in a useless 4 star card. Perhaps the best I received up to this point was a 30% draw, but following the theme of this event, I was left with another 4 star card of no use. We weren't doing much better in Division 8 either, and promotion to Division 7 didn't look like it would happen this time around. The next few days weren't much better. I received one more 5 star legend chance draw, which again resulted in a 4 star card of no use, and then one more 10% draw, which again was a 4 star card of no use. The league also wrapped up, and we remained in Division 8 for another season. Next up was the Stamina Type Special League, but I had no team to compete in this league. The type only matches had been going on around this time as well, and I managed to earn myself a refraction guaranteed medal. But as you can see in the video, again, the draw luck was not on my side. By this point, I was feeling a bit down on how the progress was going throughout this event, and Konami released the Spring Retry Draws, so I convinced myself to do two of these draws because surely I would get some improvement from a couple of retry draws. These are the players I ended up with. The first draw was awful, so I decided to retry it. The retry was pretty awful too, leaving me with Higuain, who will be sold for limit break points. By the time of the second draw, I was getting anxious that I might have just spent 500 prime balls and would be walking away with nothing. However, I got the gold flags, so I knew I would get at least one decent card. The draw ended up with 98 overall sniper version Fabian. I was already pretty stacked in the attacking areas of the team, but a 2 gold talent 98 overall player was too good to pass up on, so I decided to not retry this draw. I would definitely be making space for him in the team. By the end of the event, I had accomplished the goals I set out at the start. I had gotten gigs, plus a 5 star draw, which resulted in Asamoah. I had no 5 star left backs up until this point, so he will be my starting left back until I draw a better one. I also received another 5 star draw from the daily login rewards, however, this one resulted in Rafa, which was no use to the team, so I will be selling him for limit break points. This is what the team was looking like at the end of the Rising Stadium event. I took everyone's feedback from the last episode and switched over to a 4-3-3 formation, and the team is starting to look very nice. All that's still needed is a 5 star goalkeeper. The next event that rolled around was the Hyper Selection event. But as a new player, this event was of no use to me, so I spent this time playing training and skill matches to improve the team. I did however play one match a day in the Hyper Selection event, simply to get the daily prime ball rewards. During this period, a Prometheus draw was released, with a chance of pulling the new legend card, Beresi. I was kicking myself for using the prime balls I had saved up on the previous retry draws, but I did however have 13 draw tickets saved up that I decided to use on these Prometheus draws. I will show you now the results, sped up in order to save time.
Nothing of any real significance. I did manage to get one 5 star player, but he won't be making the team, so he will be sold for limit break points. The silver lining was that it gave me enough points to limit break Ronaldo one more time. The hyper selection event only lasted a few days, and after that was the jewel chaser event. Another event with poor rewards for newer players, so I went into it with the same strategy as the hyper event. I simply focused on training and skill matches to improve what I already had. During this time, I also went through and sold some of the 5 star players that no longer made the bench. And again, I managed to muster up enough limit break points to limit break Ronaldo once more. Once the stamina special league had finished, another regular season had started. And since switching to the 4-3-3, the team started to perform way better than they did the previous season. But it still wasn't enough for promotion into Division 7. Eventually the Jewel Chaser event came to a close, and next up was the Training Camp event. Again, not the best for newer players, but at least there was a 5 star international guarantee draw, so that's what I set my sights on for this event. I would get to that reward milestone and then go back and work on training and skill matches again for the rest of the event. After a couple of days, I managed to reach my goal. This event, along with the daily campaign rewards, left me with quite a few nice rewards, as you can see on screen. I will show you now what I managed to pull from these draws, sped up, in order to save time. It was pretty crazy to draw back to back Glicks, but he's a decent defender who can also play CDM, so I don't mind adding a limit broken version of him to the team. The rest was rather useless though. I used the points I had accumulated in the event to max out Ronaldo's high speed step over skill, upgrade both of Fabian's skills, and unlock precise tackle on Glick. This left the team looking very good for the next event. During the training camp event, we also had a Grand Prix going on and the team performed phenomenally in this, gaining promotion to Division 7. The next event that made its way to the game was one that I was looking forward to for quite some time now, and that was the Ranking Circus event. Going into this event, the only goal I had on my mind was to earn enough to get a 5 star guaranteed goalkeeper draw, so that we could complete the first goal for this series and gain a full team of 5 star players. Throughout the event, I stayed in the beginner zone, and I managed to get enough points to do a few metal mixers, get a legend fragment, buy a 30% draw, and get what I wanted most of all, a 5 star guaranteed goalkeeper. The keeper I ended up with isn't bad, considering most 5 star draws are usually 92 to 93 rated, and there are some really bad keepers out there. I am happy with 94 rated Patricio. He will make a nice addition to the team. The legend fragment I purchased also earned me enough to have a go at a legend fragment draw, so I decided to do one for Samuel, since my defense needed the most work. Although it wasn't Samuel who I got, you can never be too disappointed when you end up with a 2 gold talent player, and Dabala is a fantastic player to have. It's going to be hard to work him into the team considering we have so many great strikers, wingers, and midfielders, but hopefully he can find a place. Please leave me a suggestion in the comments below on how you think I should line up the team in order to have the most two gold talent players on the field at the same time. The other draws I received weren't great, as you can see, but still, the event was a success to me all the same. At the end of the event, I spent my lotto tickets and here's what I got. Nothing spectacular, but a 5 star draw is nice, since usually you don't get much from the lotto. And here's what I got from that draw. It would be a quite useful draw if we didn't already have Kimmich. But getting him allowed me to move another less valuable player off the bench to sell, giving us enough to limit break Ronaldo one more time. We also managed to get through another season in the league, and all these improvements helped massively as we gained back to back promotions, leaving us in Division 6. The team by the end was looking far superior to the team that started off the episode. It now has some serious quality on the bench that can come on and make a difference in the games, 
Plus, the two events I skipped gave me time to build up enough resources to level up most of the players and unlock most of the player skills. Also, we now officially have a full 5 star team, so we can check that off the list of series goals. All in all, we went through a lot over the past couple of events, and we find ourselves in a much better position to continue our push towards Division 1. We end the episode at level 47, seeing us grow 10 whole levels. In that period, we also played 329 games, scoring 3,019 goals, gaining 2 divisions, and earning an additional 4 limit breaks. Not bad for a couple weeks worth of work. Long may it continue. But that about wraps things up for episode 4. I apologize again about how long it took. I will try not to let so long pass between episodes for next time. I have the footage already recorded for the next episode, so I will try to get started on editing that right away. And I'll give you a little spoiler for that episode. We spend a lot of the prime balls that we currently have saved up on draws. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and why not subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you can be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. And also, leave a comment below on how you think I should line up the team to best maximize all the new talented players we have. But until next time, have a good one.